is this? She was born on the 23rd of July, 1968. At... Sorry about this. Uh, yeah, at the Haven, Wells, Grange Avenue. Sutton, sorry. Look, I'm sorry, I know this must be a shock to you. Mm, a shock indeed. That is from the Oscar-nominated movie Secrets and Lies. It deals with a black woman in England who realizes by doing some search that her mother was actually white. Um, how that woman reacted is, is uh, I guess, some of the concerns that people have, that not everybody may be open to open records. But George Bounds here from St. Paul, Minnesota, is certainly for them. He says that the death three months ago of his 24-year-old wife, Anna, might have been prevented only if Anna had not been denied access to her adoption records. How so, George? Um, I found out her son has just turned three, and he's been through a lot of medical problems, a lot of medical problems. Mm -hmm. And we found out through some testing that he has chromosomal damage. And uh, we found out that that was from Anna, so it's a genetic thing. And we just we were focusing 100% on, on Danny, trying to get him healthy and secure and safe. And uh, we weren't thinking about Anna being in, having any troubles or anything. She seems healthy. She was in great shape, act, very active. And uh, one day she just, we were walking to my truck and she died in my arms. Just like that? Like that. And it was uh, heart failure, which was something you don't expect in somebody that's in great shape. And, 24 years old. And uh, I, I personally believe, and uh, it sounds from re what I've read of the medical record, it sounds like it's probably something that's a genetic problem. Sure. It, Anna had been looking for her family since she was 16 out of curiosity, you know, the, the roots. And uh, until, I like say, I personally, I don't think kids should have totally open records. I like say once you're 18, you're an adult, you can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I think that ought to be done. Um, I, Anna and I talked a lot. She still had that need and that want to meet her family, that curiosity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you believe that if she had been able to go on and find out more about her biological family, she might have been able to be aware that she was ill? Yeah, I think it's very possible because it's, obviously there was chromosome damage that Anna had. Mm -hmm. And uh, that added to her condition. And her son is the same thing, so it's obviously something genetic. Mm -hmm. Deb, this sounds like you to find out that your birth mother had had, had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry that you lost your wife. Me yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me introduce to you now Janet Folger. She is the legislative director of Ohio's Right to Life. Janet says that forcing records to be open is only going to reduce the number of mothers who choose adoption. And she fears we're going to see an increase in the number of women who will choose abortion because they may be scared of all of this information of open records. Well, I think the first thing to state, and, and I'm very sorry also to hear about the loss of your wife, but there is not a person on this stage or any group that I'm aware of fighting in any legislative battle that would like to stop access to medical records. You know, that's something that we absolutely need to get to the adoptees, and I don't know if there's a single group that wants to stop that. The bottom line is you don't need identifying information to, uh, to get to that do medical that. information. But I, from the right to life perspective, as you know, there's probably not a group out there that's more pro-adoption. And uh, frankly speaking, there are some women who, for whatever reason, want that, that uh, decision to be, remain confidential. And uh, we heard testimony in the Ohio legislature, mm -hmm. and frankly, women who've come forward and testified in other states as well, that said, that, you know, if, if I had known that someone would come along and open the records up without me knowing, mm -hmm. I very likely would have turned to But Janet, abortion. isn't someone's right to privacy denying another person's right to knowledge about their life? I think we're, what we need to do is look at the rights of both. Mm -hmm. Both the mother and the child. And I think that what the, the answer really is, as we saw in our Ohio legislation, is, is mutual consent. If the mother who's placing awesome. her child for adoption, she can check if she wants the records open. She can check if she wants the records mm -hmm. closed. She can change her mind at any time you along know, the way. I would like to respond and to Janet. Let me, let me just finish, if I may. Uh, and, and, and the same is hold too f true for the adoptees, like Dorothy's mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't have that intrusion forced on her either. But if that's what both parties want, mm -hmm. nobody wants to block. And in fact, if you want an open adoption where you actually communicate along the process, mm -hmm. that's fine that's too. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be something that both parties want. Mm -hmm. Debbie, I'm going to let you respond to this okay. after we take the break. And, 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 and today, many people are choosing this new form of adoption that makes the records irrelevant. You're going to meet a young woman who maintains a close relationship with a seven-year-old daughter. She surrendered to a couple she had chosen. Open adoption is what we're going to talk about. Both families raising a good child. We'll be right back in a minute. And I'll start.